Welcome to this Real Python Exercises course, where you'll practice working with tuples and lists, which are two of Python's data types that represent collections. Our exercises courses are all about training. You'll train the process of writing code by solving carefully selected exercises. You'll also train reading other people's code and communicating your thought process. Doing all that, you'll practice the concepts that you've learned about in an associated course or tutorial and help make them stick. In the upcoming lessons, I'll introduce you to tasks, give you an opportunity to solve them yourself, and then show you step by step how I solved each of them. You'll go through three steps for each task. You'll learn about the exercise, you'll code your own solution, and then you'll compare your solution and the process that got you there to mine. When I walk you through a task, I'll explain what I do and also why I do it like that. That'll give you a chance to compare not just our final solutions, but also how we got there. Ideally, this can help you gain some insights on the process of getting from a task description to a working solution in code. In this course, you'll start with solving some review exercises in the first section of the course and then build towards a challenge. Your challenge in this course will be to build a poetry generator and you'll get to train using lists and tuples in a slightly bigger project. Okay, so now the big question, are you ready for this course? The idea of this exercises course is that you should have watched the Python Basics course on tuples and lists before starting this one. If you went through that course, then you're well equipped to solve the tasks that you're about to encounter. The concepts that you should have heard about and will practice are, of course, tuples and lists. You'll train different aspects of these data structures, such as indexing, slicing, tuple unpacking, list comprehensions, and mutability. You'll also train other concepts such as conditional logic and loops, but these won't be the focus of the exercises. If you're already somewhat familiar with these concepts and you want to fortify your knowledge with practical programming tasks, then this course is exactly right for you. Before you get started, there's another tiny bit of background for this course, which is that I'll use IDLE, the integrated development and learning environment that comes with Python. If you've gone through the Python Basics courses, then you're already familiar with the tool. If not, and you want to know more, then you can check out these associated courses that cover getting started with IDLE. But you don't need to use IDLE specifically. Any other REPL session and code editor will do. So if you're here to train outside of the Python Basics course, then feel free to use whatever tool you like to solve the upcoming coding tasks. And that's all to get you set up. Are you ready to do some hands-on programming? What about you, Mouse? Fox? Looks like everyone's ready. So let's get started with the first review exercise in the next lesson. Let's start with the first exercise. Find a location by creating a tuple literal named location that holds two floating point numbers 6.51 and 3.39, and then also the strings Lagos and Nigeria. And they should be in that order. And then use index notation to display the string at index 2 in location. And finally, use one line of code to unpack the values in location into four variables and name them latitude, longitude, city, and country. And then print each of them on a separate line. That's the task. You're going to need to create a tuple, use indexing to access a value, and then also practice tuple unpacking. Give it a try and then move on to the next lesson where you can see me solve the exercise. Let's start by creating the location tuple. So remember, you can create a tuple by using the parentheses, or you can actually leave off the parentheses, but you need comma-separated values. I always like to put the parentheses because it makes it more clear that I'm creating a tuple. So here, the first value was 6.51, floating point number, the second one, 3.39. And then we have a string, Lagos, and then another string, Nigeria. You can see here that tuples can hold different types of values. So here we have two floating point numbers and then two strings. Location looks good. And it's of type tuple. The next task was to access at index 2. And I can do that by typing the name of the tuple, location, then use the square brackets and then put in the integer for the index that I want to access. So index 2 is going to be the name of the city, Lagos. The third task was to practice tuple unpacking and assign each of those values in the tuple to one variable. 
starting by a latitude, longitude, city, and country. And I'll set that equal to location. So this location variable here points to the tuple that contains the values, and it has four values in it. And I'm putting four variables on the left side of the assignment statement. So then Python can unpack the location tuple and assign each value of the tuple to one of the variables on the left side. So 6.51 is going to go into latitude, etc. Let's look whether that works right away. So latitude now points to 651, longitude to 3.39, city to Lagos, and country to Nigeria. I'm doing this in the REPL, which is why I've omitted the calls to print, but if you did this in a script in order to actually display it, you'd have to wrap it into a print call. Same output otherwise. Cool, that's the task. On to your next exercise. This one is about person X. Use the tuple function and a string literal to create a tuple that you call my underscore name, and it should contain the letters of your name. Check whether the character X is in that tuple, and do that using the in keyword. Then create a new tuple that contains all but the first letter in my name using slice notation. So here you're practicing to create tuples using the tuple function, then using membership checking for an element inside of a tuple. And for the third point, you'll have to create a copy of the tuple because they're not mutable, so you're going to have to create a new tuple and then use slice notation to not include all of the elements, but only some of them. All right, let's go. I'm going to collect my name into the my underscore name variable, and that should be a tuple that I create by using the tuple function and putting in my name. So my name is Martin. Your name may be Martin or something else. Of course, if you put in your own name, this is going to look a little different than here, but feel free to use my name if you want to get the exact same results. Next one is checking whether the character X is in the my name tuple. Well, let's look at the my name tuple first, actually. My name looks like that. It's a tuple that contains a bunch of strings that each represent one character of my name. All right, and now I want to check is the character X in my name. I would be surprised if that was true. That would be news to me. Okay, it's not true. There is no X in my name. And then finally, I want to create a copy of the tuple that excludes the first letter. So I want to take all the characters starting from index 1, but not the character at index 0. And I can do that by using the variable name that I've defined before, then opening up square brackets to use slice notation. And I'm going to start at index 1, not at index 0, which is going to be the first letter of my name, but at index 1, which is going to be the second letter. And then I go all the way to the end. And I can do that by putting the colon and then omitting the second index. That just means go all the way to the end. And that's going to create a new tuple that contains the characters A-R-T-I-N, Artin. All right. Note that running this line of code created a new tuple, but I didn't save that tuple to a variable. If you wanted to continue to work with the tuple that's the result of this slicing operation, then you'd have to assign it to a variable. But as this is the end of the exercise, I'll keep moving on to the next one. In this exercise, you'll practice using Python to create and edit your shopping list. Note that I mentioned edit, so this is actually going to be about lists because... Remember that tuples are immutable, but lists are immutable. So you'll be able to edit this list. Start off by creating a list named food, and it should have two elements in it, rice and beans. Then you can append the string broccoli to food using the append method. Then also add the strings bread and pizza to food using the extend method. And then display the first two items in the food list using slice notation. And finally display the last item in food using index notation. Okay, let's work on that shopping list. Here we are in idle. I've pasted just the tasks into this idle session, just so I, I'm going to remember what are the actual strings that I need to add and which methods am I supposed to use to do it. And the first one was to create a list named food with two elements, rice and beans. I'll start my food list 
by opening up and closing the square brackets and then putting two string elements in there. The first one is rice and the second one is beans. I'll separate them with a comma and like I said before, surround it with square brackets and then I've got my food list. Looking good. Type of food is list. That doesn't sound too tasty. Anyways, let's keep working on this shopping list. I should append the string broccoli to the food list using the append method. So I will say food.append and then pass in an object. And this is going to be the object to add. And that should be the string broccoli. Enter and then the food. Oh, Got to not add a plus here. The food list now contains rice, beans, and broccoli. Next step is to add the strings bread and pizza using the extend method. So we're at this task right now. So I will say food.extend. And then I can pass in an iterable here, as idle nicely tells us here. So I will need another list, or it could be a tuple as well. But I'm going to use a list, and I will add to that list bread and pizza. So I create a new list element that contains two strings, bread and pizza, and I pass it as an argument to the extend method that I'm calling on the food object. Pressing enter and looking at food gives me the extended food list. Now it contains rice, beans, broccoli, bread, and pizza. Next step is to print the first two items in the food list using slice notation. I can do that by using the variable name food then opening up square brackets. And then I want to print the first two items, which means I want to start at the beginning. So I can omit the first index and just start with the column that's going to start slicing at the beginning. And I'm going to go up to index two, which means that it'll go up to, but not including two broccoli. So it will get rice and beans, but broccoli, which is at index two, is not going to be included anymore. And these are the first two items of the list. So I get a list return from slicing that contains the first two elements. And again, if you wanted to actually print that out from a script, you just have to pass it as an argument to the print function. I'll probably keep not using the print function because in here in the interactive idle shell, I can just inspect the output like this. And then the last task here, print the last item in food using index notation. So the last item, I can access it with negative indexing. So I can say food, open up the square brackets, and then pass in the index minus one, which gives me the final element in the list. And that is pizza. All right, that's the shopping list. Sounds like a relatively healthy meal, I would say. Just make sure you get a good pizza. And now that you've worked on such a yummy shopping list, I think it's time for a long breakfast. Start by creating a list called breakfast from the string eggs, fruit, orange juice. But there's a space in between, which I guess is notable because you should create the list using the string.split method. Okay, so you gotta have to think about what is the separating character or characters that you can identify in the string so that you can use dot split on the string to get a list that has these three elements in it. And then second task is to verify that the breakfast list actually has three items in it. And you can do that using the len function. And then finally, you should create a new list called length using a list comprehension that contains the length of each string in the breakfast list. Okay, so you get to practice how to create a list from a string using the string.split method. Then also just check that you did it the right way. And then also write a list comprehension. Sounds yummy too. All right, take your time. It's a long breakfast. And then see you in the next lesson where you'll see me solve it. Time to cook that breakfast. I'm going to start off by assigning the string that I've copied eggs, fruit, and orange juice to a variable. Breakfast underscore string equals eggs, fruit, orange juice. And now... I want to split it to create a list from that. And I can use the split method to do that. Now, I'll have to think about what's the separator that I want to split on. If I just do the default, it's going to split on spaces. 
and that's gonna also split between orange and juice. Let's try it out just for the fun of it. Breakfast string dot split, and I'm not passing an element in here. You can see that that gives me a list that consists of x comma fruit comma orange no comma and then juice. And so that's four elements, which is not how you want to split it. So if you use the split method, it's important that you think about what is the character that you want to split on or characters, because here the best would be to split on comma and space, because then I think we should get the three elements that we're looking for. So I will assign breakfast to breakfast string dot split. And then as a separator, I'm going to use comma and space. And now we can look at breakfast. And that contains three elements, eggs, fruit, and orange juice. Let's prove that these are three elements indeed. Breakfast, the length of breakfast. So if I pass breakfast to the len function, then I get as an output three, which means that there's three elements in that list, which already completes the second task. Or I guess we wanted to confirm that it's three long, so you could do something like saying len and then passing in breakfast and then saying equals equals three and then we get true as a result. That's another way to confirm that it's actually three elements long. Okay, and then finally, the last task was to get a list comprehension of the lengths of each element. All the elements are strings, which means they have a length. And now I want to create a list that I'll call lengths using a list comprehension. And I do that by saying equals, then open up the square brackets, open and close them. And then inside of the square brackets, I'm going to start off by first writing what I want to do to each element, which is calling the len function on it. And I will pass in the breakfast item. So I want to calculate the length of each breakfast item and I want to do this for breakfast item in breakfast. So breakfast item is just a loop variable. So you could name this anything you want to as long as you name both of the occurrences the same. And this should give me a list with the lengths of each of the strings. Eggs is four characters long, fruit is five characters long, and orange juice is 12 characters long. And note that also the space counts as a character in here. Let's double check that. Len of orange juice is 12. Okay, that's it. We could drag it out a little more just to actually have a long breakfast here. What's another way of getting the length of that list? compare the lengths in the list to calling the len function directly. Hmm. I could say len of breakfast at index 2. And I want that to be equal to lengths at index 2. True, yay! If you want to draw out your breakfast a little more, you could even write a for loop to make this comparison for each of the elements. But I'm full, so I'm moving on.